Hi. First things first, you might be wondering why I am capable of giving study advice. So, I'm a final year computer science student at the University of Cambridge, and I keep up with my peers despite being at a top university. So, how do I study? Um, firstly, I love to use Anki, which is digital flashcard software that schedules when you should review a flashcard based on whether you knew the flashcard previously. Uh, so this helps uh, with spaced repetition, um, which is a which takes into account that your memory on, on a topic or a fact gets worse over time um, to best schedule when you should review information. Um, and I, in terms of how I make my cards, um, I do a fairly controversial thing that I like to call direct Anki. Um, so this is the technique of not keeping notes beyond those that are provided by my lecturer and instead taking notes from a lecture by turning content directly into flashcards in Anki. Uh, this might not be appropriate for subjects where you write essays or open book exams, but it makes a lot of sense for closed book exams as why would you spend time writing notes when you need to have everything stored in your memory for the final exam. Many people disagree with this approach and prefer to go back to make their flashcards after a lecture. And while this does in theory produce higher quality flashcards, as you know what is coming up late in a lecture before you make the flashcard, it does have the downside of requiring you to go through the content of the lecture twice. Um, this takes too much time for me. Um, I typically would have two lectures a day on the weekdays, so that's 10 hours of lectures already. Um, if, I have to, <clears throat> if I have to go through these lectures twice, that is 20 hours of content, just of time just spent watching lectures. So this takes too much time for me, but your mileage may vary. Maybe you can make it work for you. Um, on to what my cards look like. I utilize four different types of cards in Anki. Um, so there's the most basic card that has a question on the front and an answer on the back, just like a physical flashcard. Um, and here's an example. Um, I also make use of reverse flashcards, which are really useful for simple definitions and ensuring you gain a good grasp of a definition, as it ensures you know the answer from the word to the definition and the definition to the word. Uh, so here it would go cognitive dimension of consistency to the definition, and but it also might ask me, give me the definition and have me remember which cognitive dimension it is. Um, and this flashcard's just um, it's some ideas in user interfaces. That's where that's taken from my course. Um, the next type is close cards, which I'm not sure where the name's from, uh, but these are effectively gap fills. Um, and these are very useful when you're struggling to make an atomic basic flashcard and you should only use these when you cannot structure the information as a basic card. Um, so this can be useful for the steps of a mathematical proof, um, various properties of an idea um, or steps to a more general process. Um, and you can see an example. Uh, lastly, there are image occlusion cards. I don't resort to these too often as there aren't too many images uh, on my degree, but they're useful for memorizing visual information. In this example, I use it to memorize what a specific graph looks like, um, where the, this red box um, hides the information I need to retrieve. Uh, this does require a specific add-on for Anki, but this is free, and you can find it on the Anki add-on page and install without much effort. You want to make your set of flashcards as comprehensive as possible for what you're studying. Um, in a year at university, I make three to 4,000 flashcards. A person I know who typically ranks in the top five on my course makes twice as many as that. Um, so the more the better. Um, however, making flashcards is an iterative process. And if something doesn't make sense as you're reviewing your flashcard, you should edit it until it does, as quantity isn't everything. On the topic, let's talk about reviewing flashcards in Anki. Um, you should review all your flashcards daily, as the Anki scheduler expects you to be doing that. 
and this ensures that over time you slowly know more and more of the necessary content for your exam and makes exam season much less stressful. Um, Anki shouldn't be used for cramming. Um, you want to be doing past papers in the period just before your exams as this is much more effective and representative of what you will be asked on the exam than your self-written flashcards. Um, if you're in the zone and your flashcards are atomic or small enough, um, I'm able to get, get up to seven seconds per card with this technique during review. Um, people who study simpler facts like language vocabulary uh, exclusively can get five seconds per card. So doing reviews takes at most an hour a day if I'm not focusing and just being slow. Maybe I'm with some friends while I do my reviews. But more typically, this takes around 20 minutes. Um, I use a better scheduler for Anki called FSRS for Anki, which helps to reduce the number of flashcards you need to do per day by better scheduling your flashcards. Uh, so it does this by modeling how memory works more effectively than the default Anki scheduler. Um, and I've made a video on setting up FSRS for Anki um, and training it on how your memory works on your flashcards. And you can watch that if you're interested. So to summarize, Anki is powerful digital flashcard software that uses spaced repetition to improve memory retention. Um, I recommend using direct to Anki for closed book exams as it minimizes time spent writing notes that will not directly improve your ex exam performance and knowledge of the content. Um, I use four types of flashcards, basic, reversed, close, and image occlusion. And you should aim to use the basic or reverse flashcards whenever possible over the more complex flashcards as these are more atomic. Um, and specifically with image occlusion, as it's in an image, you can't search by it when you want to go look up a flashcard. So the text versions are a lot better than image occlusion if you can use it. Using Anki to learn content is a numbers game. You want to make as many flashcards as possible to memorize as much of your syllabus as possible. Um, as flashcards made with direct Anki are not necessarily the best worded when initially written, you should edit and tweak these during review if you think something's worded poorly. It's crucial to review your flashcards every day for effective space repetition and long-term retention. Um, Anki should not be used for last minute cramming. Instead, you want to use it as a tool for ongoing learning. Focus on doing past papers closer to exams and use FSRS for Anki's scheduler in order to reduce the amount of flashcards you need to review every day in order to save time or achieve a higher attention rate. Um, so that's it. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask me them in the YouTube comment section or you can join my Discord in the description. Um, thanks for watching and bye.